Today, I'm gonna to talk about my top five max cushion shoes of 2020. This week, I'm talking about my top five max cushion shoes of 2020. These are the shoes that I'm reaching for on the days where I'm the most tired, where my body's the most beat up, and I've got to run the longest mile. This is a category where cushion is at a premium and heavy weight be damned. These are the real thick boys of the running world, and I'm gonna give you my favorites, but first I wanna go over some disclosures. Some of these shoes were provided to me for the purpose of review, some of them I bought myself, but in either event, no one's paying me to make this video or to include their shoe in this video, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the top five Max Cushion shoes of the year. First, let's talk about the Bondi 7. The Bondi is a classic max cushion shoe. It kind of exemplifies this category of shoe. It's got the tallest stack height available on a Hoka road shoe, and it's just full of that compression molded EVA foam. It's got 32 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot, a four millimeter drop. It's got a rocker to help you roll that foot off the ground. It also has an ortholite liner. That's gonna be something you see frequently in this category to make sure that step in comfort is at its maximum level. And it's got loads of foam all around the heel collar, in the ankle, in the padding of the tongue, everywhere you can make something soft on this shoe. It's soft. And the Bondi 7 weighs in at 10.5 ounces. It was a shoe that I thought this year was much improved over the Bondi 6 because last year's Bondi 6, for me, took like 30 or 40 miles to really break in. This year in the Bondi 7, I felt like I got that max cushion goodness from the outset straight out of the box. And it's definitely gonna be one of the best max cushion shoes of the year. Next, let's talk about the Triumph 18. I feel like we only just recently got the Triumph 17, but we're already getting the Triumph 18 for 2020. It's got Power Run Plus, that magnificent foam that looks like Boost, smells like Boost, but behaves better than Boost. And there's tons of it in the midsole of this shoe. 24 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot, going up to 30 two millimeters in the heel for an eight millimeter drop. It's got Power Run Plus ortho light liner and it's got memory foam all over the place as well. I do feel like it's trimmed down just a little bit and toned down the amount of memory foam that's in there, but even so, it still comes in at a whopping 11.3 ounces. Nevertheless, it runs like a much lighter shoe. It's part of what I think is like the new category or the new school in Max Cushion shoes where you're still getting that maximum level of impact absorption every time your foot hits the ground, but these new materials that they're able to use keep you from feeling like you're getting too mired down in excess softness. So you're getting kind of the best of both worlds in these shoes and the Triumph 18 does a fantastic job of exemplifying this new direction for Max Cushion. Third, let's talk about the Ultra Boost 20. An Ultra Boost is always kind of a controversial running shoe to include in any kind of top five category video. And mainly it's because a lot of people that are buying Ultra Boost aren't using for running. And a lot of people that are thinking about buying Ultra Boost for running are discounting it as not really being a running shoe. But make no mistake, this year in 2020, it is definitely a running shoe. I think it's probably the most runnable Ultra Boost that I've ever experienced going back several years now. But 
The controversial part about it this year is not whether this is a great shoe to run in. The question is, does it still count as a max cushion shoe? Because they've trimmed down the amount of Ultra Boost in that midsole. In fact, there's a lot of shoes that I would consider that are daily trainers that have much more stack height than this shoe does in the forefoot. But it is 100% boost in the midsole of this shoe. So it does still give you some of that max cushion feeling. And they've also rounded it out in terms of in the heel area. They basically did almost a direct upper swap from the Solar Boost 19 of last year. All the materials are very soft towards the back half of the shoe and in the front you've got that prime knit which I'm still a really big fan of and think it's very comfortable. So while it might not be max cushion, it still is max comfort shoe and I think it belongs on this list definitely in the top five. Next let's talk about what I think think still belongs in the 2020 category is the 1080 V10 from New Balance, full of a bunch of fresh foam X foam, which is nice and springy. There's 22 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot and eight millimeter drop, giving you 30 millimeters of fresh foam X in the heel. It's a tall shoe, it's a bouncy shoe, and it's gonna soak up the miles. It's absolutely fantastic to run in. It comes in at 9.9 .9 ounces, and that's also including the ortholite liner that's in the insole here. The only thing that I kind of gave me pause in putting it in my 2020 list is that I think I got an early version of the shoe last year and I reviewed it last November. So I technically reviewed it in 2019, but I don't think it came out until 2020. And as far as I can tell, as of the filming of this video today on December 11th, there isn't a 1080 version 11 yet. So I think for 2020, we're getting that version 10. And it is definitely, I think, the best example of this new kind of max cushion shoe where you're getting max comfort, max cushion, but also you're getting a very lively ride that will help you keep your foot moving, keep that turnover high. And while it's not gonna be your speed day shoe as well, you're never gonna feel really bogged down in this shoe. It's something that's gonna still feel really lively. And at number five, let's talk about the Nike Infinity Run. If you were a fan of the Epic React, which I was a huge fan of the Epic React one and by default then the Epic React version two, you're gonna like the Infinity React Run or it's Infinity Run React or the React Infinity Run. I can never remember the order of the words. It's got every, it's like, it's kind of like a uh, Epic React Max where it's got all the things that I liked about the Epic React. It's got a super comfortable upper that has that sock-like feel, which seems to be falling out of favor these days in terms of running shoe, but it's still a material that I enjoyed. And it's got even more React foam in the midsole. And you've got guide rails on this shoe, which is going to help those of you who need a little bit more stability or when you're taking this shoe on your longest runs or on those days where you're the most tired it's going to help your ankle stay in place even if your form is getting a little bit sloppy and in addition to that it also has a much wider base the amount of shoe that you're landing on is a little bit wider which is also going to increase the amount of stability that's in this shoe i've seen you guys running in the infinity run react and logging tons of miles in it it's a shoe that until just recently, I thought it was gonna be Nike's only max cushion shoe available because I wasn't sure that we were gonna get a Vomero this year. I thought the Vomero line had been killed off, but I just saw some images today, again, today's December 11th, that the Vomero 15, I mean, I've seen images for the Vomero 15 earlier, but I just saw that it went for sale in some international markets today. So while I don't know if the US is gonna get the Vomero 15 for 2020, it'll certainly be available in 2021. Until then, the Infinity Run React is your best bet if you're looking for a Nike Max Cushion shoe. Now, when it comes to picking a winner in this category, for me, it's gonna come down to the Triumph 18 and the 1080 V10. I'm a big fan of that new school of Max Cushion shoes where you're still getting all that Max Cushion comfort, but you're getting it in a package that doesn't feel as heavy and bulky as it once was. And this year, it's very close for me, but I'm gonna give it to the 1080 version 10. I'm a big fan of that fresh foam X and how springy it is. I think when you're talking about a heavier shoe and these shoes still are on the heavy side, that fresh foam X compensates for the weight a little bit better than Power Run Plus does. I think when we're talking about max cushion and max comfort, I think that the 1080 version 10 delivers with that fresh foam X material. Now, here's the other thing. 
I mentioned that I ran in the 1080 version 10 over a year ago at this point, and I'm still running in the Triumph 18 right now. So it might just be the nostalgia that's giving the 1080 version 10 the edge. I've always said that nostalgia is the softest midsole foam, but I think that for the purpose of max cushion, when you're looking for the shoe for the longest runs, for your recovery days, for the days when your body is the most beat up, I do like the, the way that the Fresh Foam X in the 1080 V10 can deliver all those things while avoiding being cumbersome or clunky. So because of the innovation and the way that it's bringing Max Cushion shoes forward, I'm gonna give the best Max Cushion shoe of the year to the 1080 version 10. Now, those are my top five, but whenever I do a top five of anything, I always like to include a bonus. And the bonus for this year is the Brooks Glycerin 18. And the reason I put it in the bonus is because I actually didn't love the Glycerin. This was my first time running in the Glycerin this year, and I was expecting something super plush, super mushy, super kind of like old school max cushion shoe. That's not really what I got. It felt kind of like a not max cushion to me. I just didn't really get any of that maximum level of anything in the shoe. It just kind of felt like a daily trainer to me, but most people consider that a max cushion shoe. I think Brooks positions it as a max cushion shoe as well. And I got the triple black this year and that enabled me to be able to work with Greg Itahara of Itahara Custom Designs and put a big old Buffett face on the side of mine. So I just really like that. And it's a max cushion shoe. So I thought, I throw it in there as the bonus for this year. So those are my thoughts on the five plus one max cushion shoes for 2020. Let me know in the comments what's in your top five. I'd love to hear about it more or better yet, come by the live stream that I do just about every day on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central Time. And I'd love to talk to you guys about it there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys stay safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?